Hey, hey, Arlington, Virginia schools. Let's talk about them. So Arlington schools have been really held in pretty high regard for most years, but then we had COVID and it seemed like the loyalty and support that they enjoyed for many, many decades kind of fell by the wayside as parents had to, you know, deal with the decisions that the specific school district was making in response to COVID or what their specific school may have been doing. And so now that we're all back in person for the second year in a row, woohoo! Let's talk about how they're doing and how people feel about Arlington schools. So I am Melissa Terz, as DC Real Estate Mama. I talk all things living in DC, real estate, living here, moving here. And if that is your thing, then go ahead and subscribe or hit the little bell notification so you can be notified when I do new videos. I try to crank one out once a week, but I also research them very painfully. So I like them to be quality, not quantity. So sometimes I miss a Wednesday. I'm sorry. Sometimes it happens. Uh, anyway, if you need me, I'm going to put my contact info up on the screen as well. So, all right, Arlington County Schools. So quick note, Arlington County is also like a city. So everywhere in Arlington has an Arlington mailing address. So even though you've got different neighborhoods, you're not going to have a mailing address to a different neighborhood. It's essentially one central you know, they've got different zip codes, but Arlington is Arlington. It's a county, it's a city. There you go. Um, so Arlington County school system is on the small side. It's got 23 elementary schools, six middle schools, four high schools, one school that is a six to 12 uh, grade coverage, and then you've got several other programs. So the student population in Arlington speaks 90 different languages, making this a melting pot representing 145 different nations, which is pretty awesome. So Arlington schools also boast a 95% graduation rate, which is pretty exceptional and kind of above what some of the other districts that we've seen, which hover around 91, 92%-ish. Niche.com says that they are the number two school district in Virginia, if you believe that. I don't know that I would say that they rank that high. I think there's some other districts that might go ahead of them. Regardless, that is what their recent ranking was. So according to the superintendent, this year for the 2022 to 2023 school year, the county is 99% fully almost fully staffed. So teacher compensation was increased by 6.8% on average, which is fantastic. Teachers should always make more money because I don't know who would volunteer to spend their day in a classroom with a bunch of unruly children, but hey, there's some wonderful personalities out there that do it and they should be compensated for it. Student enrollment is also up. They have a new Where's the Bus app this year where you can track where your little student might be on the bus. The county also grew very, very rapidly in the past, in the recent past. So there was a lot of overcrowding issues. Um, boundary adjustments are still needed. High school overcrowding is being addressed uh, by adding on to Washington Liberty, which is the central of the three high schools. And we'll talk about that more. And that's going to increase their enrollment capability probably to 3,000 students or more. That is a massive ass high school. I'm sorry. My high school was pretty big, but we had about 500 per class, so like 2,000 in the school, and that was huge. I, there's still people that pop up, and everyone's like, he was in our high school graduating class. I'm like, who? No clue. Anyway, I'm sure they all feel about that about me too. Like, who the hell is that person? So let's talk about academics now. So Arlington County academics, we're going to discuss this in terms of school pyramids, which, um, which is basically the high school that they feed to, because that is a lot of how people address things in Arlington is which pyramid is it in. So there are three boundary by right schools in Arlington. You've got Yorktown, which services the northern part of Arlington. Uh, that tends to have a lot more single family houses. So you've got Yorktown that services there. You've got Washington Liberty that services the southern part of North Arlington. So let's just call this Central Arlington to try to make this a little bit more clear for you. And then also you've got Wakefield, which services South Arlington. There are a few other programs that you can apply for. Arlington Tech is a career technical school with a STEM focus. This is on the Arlington Career Center campus, which is home to a broad array of educational experiences. So there's opportunities for dual enrollment with Northern Virginia to community college, and there's career-focused classes and industry certifications. HB Woodlawn is a lottery-based high school. It services grades 6 through 12. And then here, the students have a lot more autonomy over their actual education experience, and they can kind of write the ticket a little bit more. That is application-based. So 
we're really going to focus on the three mainstream public high schools, which the majority of students are going to choose to go to. I just wanted to mention the other ones because I wanted you to know that there are other programs available that if you you know have a high schooler that may want something different, that you should look into a little bit deeper. And we can, of course, talk about that stuff, too. So Arlington uh, schools invested in new instruction materials, and there is 24-7 virtual learning available for older students to help connect with any losses that they had during COVID and the COVID years. This is huge because just now it's sort of coming to light what kind of losses in learning people had with COVID and there's there's students struggling at every grade level and so the fact that they're addressing this I think is good and proactive the quality of the program and how it's working out I think still remains to be seen overall Arlington is also known for being very anti-tracking and so uh, they don't that which that means they don't really group students out according to abilities they do have talented and gifted programs but it seems like those things are essentially being dismantled for the most part. Yorktown does offer AP classes as well as Wakefield. Washington Liberty has an IB program and they also offer AP classes. So the gifted students are supposed to really get the more challenging work from their teachers in elementary school and then get differentiated classes in middle school and then in high school they're going to move on to the AP or IB classes. If you don't like this, don't look at Arlington County. Go to another county for schools. Because I think what we already know is that at the elementary level, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, if you had people who might have been behind, they now have them on an IEP, but they're all in you know the same essential class, and the teacher is trying to figure out how to teach to a couple different levels. Sometimes they have an aid, sometimes they don't have an aid, sometimes those students leave for that, sometimes they don't. I think personally, it's a lot to put on a teacher to have them figure out how to differentiate in the grade for ability level. And so if you're not okay with this giant painting the broad brush where everybody's gonna kind of move from one step to the next, then you probably just do not want to look at Arlington County. So general comments that you're gonna hear are, Yorktown can be more competitive and stressful since Northern Arlington is quote unquote more affluent, bigger lots, single family houses, larger properties, that's where you're tying the affluence in. This is not me telling you, hey, Northern Arlington is more affluent. It's just, this is based on house type and house price and what North Arlington offers. So most families are gonna live in a single family home. Washington Liberty is huge because there's actually a lot more population density in the Southern part um, or what we're of North Arlington or what I was saying, we're gonna call Central Arlington. Wakefield has a much, very, much more um, varied student population. They've got diverse socioeconomic statuses and South Arlington has many families for whom English actually might be their second language. So Washington Liberty and Wakefield are both pretty, what people call inclusive, which means at those schools, there just don't seem to be a lot of reports of like, mean girls. I don't know. I mean, I think they're at every school, but regardless, and again, I'm going off, as I said in other videos, I'm going off of various different like forums that I find where I read things. And so I take all of it with a grain of salt, but I try to look for some recurring themes and see, you know, oh, do they mention an incident that might have happened? And then we can kind of sort of track to that and figure out what actually happened. And can I find any other evidence of that online? So regardless, people do describe Washington, uh, Liberty and Wakefield as somewhat more inclusive where even like the quirky kids are going to find their place um, and they accept uh, kids of all walks of life. Yorktown, not so much. I went to high school in a place that sounds a lot like Yorktown and yeah, while everybody found their place, I also do think that um, somebody that might sort of not walk the, the regular path that everybody else does, like a lemming, you know, those people, they can get annihilated, whatever, in high school. It's just ends up not being a great experience. So there are a lot of computer games and apps and many parents don't love the screens that their kids sit in front of all day and obviously this ramped up for all of us in every school district during COVID. But when compared to DC, I think Arlington County is just known for having much better resources for those with learning disabilities. But regardless, it can be hit or miss with some parents feeling the need to pull their children out and put them into private as they get to older grades. That's a universal problem we're seeing everywhere though. It just depends again what you feel about the school district and how you feel that it's 
servicing your child. So let's talk a little bit about extracurriculars. There's a lot of good stuff here at the high school level. All the usual sports are offered. Football, baseball, swimming, diving, field hockey, uh, volleyball, track, tennis, softball, crew. You got a ton of them. It's worth going onto Arlington County's website and then selecting on the upper left. It says like choose your school. You can choose the school and then check what their extracurricular activities are. As far as clubs go, I'm jealous. There are so many to choose from and you can even start your own. So the schools provide a framework for setting up a club charter. There's an animal welfare club. That thing's got my name all over it. There is an analyzing literature club. Also the nerd in me. I would love to sit around and read books and analyze them all day. That would be so fun. There's a special effects and makeup club. I know that my daughter Marcina would love that. She took a makeup club up at Imagination Stage in Bethesda. Loved that. Sewing, singing, robotics, coding, languages. There there is so much to choose from. The offerings alone are indicative of a varied and very intelligent student population, in my opinion. We did not have clubs like that. Anyway, I'm very jealous. So let's talk a little bit now about the Arlington County School Administration. So the schools are overseen in Arlington by a superintendent as well as a school board comprised of five members. Criticisms of Arlington schools are, you know, that they cave to the loudest voices. Generally, people enjoy the demographic balance offered by Washington Liberty and they feel that Arlington County is just adding on to make it larger so that it can accommodate more students instead of rezoning parts of the district to go to Wakefield or Yorktown. And those don't offer the same number of academic options that Washington Liberty does. So I would almost say that like 10 years ago, a lot of what it was was I want to be in the Yorktown pyramid and times have changed. People are wanting to be in the Washington Liberty Pyramid. And I think that that ends up for some reason, they have sort of shied away from that. Again, their words, not mine, the more affluent school, even though Yorktown's not, I mean, these schools aren't too far apart from each other, regardless the neighborhood and the areas that they service. Washington Liberty has just become, you know, the, the demographic balance, I think, is one that almost everybody feels like they could find their home in. The school board spent $5 million upgrading security throughout all of the school buildings in lieu of the security officers in each school. They do have trained security officials in the middle and high school buildings only. All right, a little bit about No Child Left Behind. I'm sorry that my child Leah is not here to play her No Child Left Behind game again about when she got left in the elevator. That was on my Alexandria video. Crazy child. Anyway. What's new this year is that they do have the Every Student Counts program. So I have to read the superintendent statement. I'm sorry, so I have to read it because it's a quote directly from the website. So when you think about the last few years through COVID, we had a lot of students who really struggled and some that did very well, explained the superintendent. What we're seeing in our preliminary data from our state assessments, many successes for some, but not all. So this year we're really focusing on our Every Student Counts excellence for all students, looking at who our students are that need this most support. So what does this mean? Well, I don't think we know yet because the program's new and we're at the beginning of the school year. But we can guess that if they are phasing out any sort of talented and gifted programs, then they're definitely going to be working on pulling up those who truly were left behind. All right, so Arlington is a small school district, but it's got a lot of students because the population is pretty dense. So there were parent complaints about how long school went virtual during COVID, but we've moved on from that. We're back at in-person and there's a lot to be happy about here. If you want to avoid the big school experience, you can can also apply for something like HB Woodlawn or Arlington Tech Lotteries, which are smaller and can feel more inclusive than the bigger high schools. In Arlington, you have a very nice, diverse lineup of opportunities, but not a lot of advanced work at lower grades. And so being in Virginia, you have access to colleges like UVA, William and Mary, Virginia Tech, James Madison, uh, Mary Washington, Virginia Commonwealth, among others. And so that there's always things to complain about, but something like that also feels like a pretty big win for me. So that's the schools in Arlington. I hope you enjoyed that. I am Melissa Terzis. If you have any questions about real estate or anything Arlington related, let's chat. My contact info is coming next.